Hello, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to today's stream. I'm, I'm Colette. I'm the art director in RFM. And today we'll be talking about some fun stuff. I mean, if you guys like uh, design stuff, I guess. I hope. <laughs> We'll be, uh, I'll be showing you some of the stuff we've been doing around the um, the newer uh, graphic interfaces. I hope I'm saying that word correctly. But yeah, some of the stuff we've been working on currently, currently, and well, I'll be working more of that. Today will be a lot more of a tiny um, chill stream, if you want to say it like that. I'm just going to be working some stuff. And if you guys have any... <laughs> it's a very nice cow, right? <laughs> it's very serious. I like it. It's like it's it, the little cow makes me company while I'm um working in here. <laughs> I'm trying some new fun decorations for the stream. I really hope you guys like it. However, yeah, I think I'm, I'm a fan of the cow. <laughs> He's playing around with the new technology. But yeah, so today, as I was saying, it's going to be a pretty calm stream. It's not going to be much of a gameplay one as the last time. And not so much, I mean, if you guys did follow us on the stream the other day where we were just, um, <coughs> how you call it? Where we were talking about more of like the characters and the whole well, design behind them. Today we're going to work a little bit more around that stuff. So let me show you a little bit of the process we do with this. Now... Let's give a little moment so the game loads up. So yeah, we're going in a more um, <coughs> design version now. So we're going to play directly from the game, from Unity. It's a little bit more fun that way. At least for the stuff that I will be doing today. <laughs> so yeah, most of this stuff is, as I was telling you guys, it's exactly about uh, the font graphic design stuff. Like we're, we're looking around from the fonts and looking at like the, the display, trying around some of that stuff. And we'll be focusing mostly on the part of this, uh, well, the combat UI, I hope I'm saying that correctly, but <clears throat> this fun little stuff, you know, like this, um, the containers, all of the colors, all of that stuff. Right now, we've been on the work, in the process of finishing this up. As you can see, we have some of the ones. Well, this one, these are exactly the old designs we were using. And as I was telling you guys, it's a, we're, Halfway there, so some of the interfaces are still looking a little bit dumb. All in that say in that way. Specifically these ones. So here we go. I think this looks better. <clears throat> I've seen this a lot of times before. But there were some fun little uh, designer tricks. Or more of um development hacks. If you wanted to say it that way. Yeah. Exactly here. Very recently, we just started working on a new interface. If any of you guys ever had a chance to see some of the stuff we were doing beforehand, you might remember how our old um, UI was a little bit more like all over the place. So we've been working on <coughs> fixing this a little bit up, making that a little bit more streamlined, a lot more... Um, dark if we want to go in that way and that's exactly what we're trying to fix right now if any of you guys didn't get a chance to see that let me show you some of the way of the stuff the way it looked, looked before so yeah I've, i'm sometimes kind of a messy designer as you can see i have like a bunch of stuff floating all over the place in my <laughs> interface you can see it's quite all over the place, but somehow it, I mean, it makes sense to me. 
and well yeah since i'm the only one working right now on the interfaces it's not that big of a deal however sometimes when you do need to like share file stuff for the other work members it's always a good idea to try and be as clean and ordered as possible so the next person who works in this stuff doesn't have such a hard time However, I definitely am not in that boat, at least for this. As I was saying, this one was just for me. And I could do a bunch of fun stuff in it. Now, let me show you a little bit more of the old. Stuff. It's a fun time. Usually this program doesn't have that much of a hard time, but when you start adding a lot of stuff into it, you can see it starts like getting a little bit um slow in the whole work stuff. Now you might notice I have a fun a bunch of fun little um <clears throat> posters around me for the whole um design stuff. Now some of you guys would ask uh, on previous streams about how which ones were our references for the UI. And definitely, I mean, if you guys remember, Persona 5 is one of our main inspirations. It's definitely still a very big inspiration, like on the whole. But as I was telling you guys before, we have a lot of, um, we're trying to add a lot of inspiration also from um, Soul Bass. I hope that's how you pronounce the name. I hope I'm not butchering that too much, but yeah, he was the one that went did, did the um the poster for the Shining, this one of Exodus, the Man with the Golden Arm. They're like older movies around the like 80s, 70s, around that time. But we really like the the way he would do his compositions and this there's this small feeling of having something be like if you could call it like slightly handmade where if you can see a little bit closer here you can tell how the lines are very um they're not very, they're not straight you have like this feeling that keeps like as if it was done like um very free-handed without uh, rulers or anything of the sort just like a very normal um just one stroke and let, let it be like very expressive and it we just really like the whole feeling of how it felt very um Free, we could call it like that very free flowing very very nice and yeah just just very very nice so we're trying to give some of this feeling to the newer ui where we can have a lot more of a of, uh, handmade feeling instead of just being a normal um more straightforward like um vector image so yeah just give me a second here let me see if i can find the old one because again my, my computer hasn't been very friendly today for some reason a lot of stuff has been like kind of all over the place i hope this one actually works but yeah so this one's here we're like our first um trying our first um what's the word sorry the um, versions of the interface where we're going a lot more like geometric and a lot more um a lot more persona 5 inspired in this aspect like everything was a lot more um all over the place we had a lot more of an angular feeling we had less colors but it definitely made it like very very hard to read so you can see we have stuff like this, like the colors. It, it feels a lot more um, dynamic and we could call it kind of aggressive. With a lot more of like sharp edges and all of this kind of stuff. You can see how it's very... Um... <clears throat> hard to read. At least I personally think it's very hard to read now when we were, doing, when we were working on it. It was pretty hard to work on. However, like, sorry, 
my computer just, I was saying, get, get kind of stuck with here. Now, if we go back to the newer one, you can see it's a lot more um, straight, if we could call it that way. There's not like a lot of um, inclinations all over the place as in beforehand. And now we just have like a lot more clean and easy stuff to look at. So yeah, I hope you guys find this interesting and you join me as I do more of this stuff. Or at least you can see how much I suffer with this uh, program. It's the fun part. Anybody who works in design will know about this or animation too. Maya is a very fun... Well, all 3D programs are very prone to randomly crashing when you need them the most. Strader kind of tends to do the same thing too. But it's just something that happens. Oh. Is the volume <clears throat> going on right, guys? Is the music too loud? Everything's fine on that side? If anything those get too loud, please. <clears throat> <coughs> Do tell me. Oh yeah, this whole part of the um, we were exploring some stuff like working around with having some more illustrations on the menus. Like beforehand, we only had this bunch of uh, random icons where you would just see just uh. The normal information and a lot more like all over the place but we were trying to go with like something a bit more um cleaner but also having a little bit more of like tiny details around the around the screen so this one here we're trying like this is still like a work in progress we're definitely not leaving it like in this way like it's still like a very much of a sketch but it helps us to have this whole feeling of you know like the item placement so it doesn't feel like too crowded but it still feels a little bit cozy and nice if we could go around the lines this one here is a fun little um menu we haven't quite integrated but when we do this one will help so you can tell how how far you're gone in your in your run you'll be able to see how much of uh, how much of your currencies you've acquired, how much time you've been in this run, what are your skills, which mods have you added to your skills, just like a little normal information screen. Still definitely something we haven't finished up. Hopefully we can get to it soon. But it's adding new interfaces can be some kind of a, like a very tricky thing. So there's a lot of like trial and error here. Hmm. Now something like it, that's kind of fun in the whole design aspect. We usually like have some placeholder names or we sometimes like add stuff before it's like completely added into the game. Oh, I did that. I should have done that. However, it's kind of like a fun process, as I was saying. Now, as I was saying before, we have a bunch of... In the past, it was a... As I was saying, it was like a lot more angular. We had this whole feeling, and now I'm going to take the screenshots from here and send it over to the other screen. Yeah, as you can see beforehand, everything was just like very straight line and normal. But if like I give a very close zoom in to the interface, you can see how we're doing a lot more of an expressive stroke all over the place. Like we, we no longer have straight lines. It's all very much so like a little bit more doodlish trying to go and emulate this feeling from the posters. 
<clears throat> it was a very difficult process for sure like trying to get this all the right it's been like a bunch of trials trying to get the stuff correctly but as i was saying it's kind of like the fun part like we have all of these versions trying to see how we could add the um the remapping screen you can see stuff all over the place in here maybe if we could see like the movement in like in a long right um left and right movement but we ended up going with more of a list thing let me show it to you guys inside the game so yeah here we kind of have like a fake setting for now like we definitely haven't been able to integrate the whole volume stuff but it's good to know that it will be there one day but yeah as you can see a lot of the fun part is the whole um trying to see how to move stuff <clears throat> like getting the whole feeling of yeah the icons are here the information is here it's an easy list you just like move stuff around and it's also like some of the stuff that we can um we get some <clears throat> we did the, the first thing in the pro like in uh, I don't know, we use illustrator i hope i said that right illustrator but yeah some stuff like like knowing the uh, when you get some when you select something the color will be in here which color there will be how how it will kind of look however there's no need to like animate it for like uh for like a preview because we, we already know how this will work directly inside the game it's a fun fact like this one isn't like exactly animated but it's actually a nice little um shader we use inside the game which keeps like this interesting effect into the into the selection how like for example if i were to do this we have this fun little material if i select it We have these nice effects, which happens to give us this little thing. However, if I were just to like move around with the textures, you can see how the effect changes completely. I'm just like clicking on random stuff to make a quick example. But now I can find the other one. It's a pretty interesting stuff. Maybe another day we can have a more interesting um, stream talking about the whole shader side of stuff. I'm sadly I'm not the one who um, created them. That's uh, part of job from um, Eri and Emma. I think you, you guys have seen Eri before in some of the streams. They're part of the technical art team, and they're the ones who managed to do all this amazing stuff where we can just like where there's no need to animate anymore. We just have this fancy shader which gives us the effect of selecting stuff and just something it's a, it's a very slight movement but it works a lot now right now <coughs> excuse me just a second Something just died in here.
Hmm. Sorry about that, I got a little bit sidetracked for a second. <clears throat> But yes, while we were doing this, the idea is to work around the other, um, yeah, there we go with that. <clears throat> Trying to update the other, um, screens. Now I'm trying to look for one in particular, which, ah, uh, there we go. I wasn't able to find this image in here. But, yeah. So beforehand we had all of this information where everything is kind of going all over the place. Something we were, we're trying to do with the newer interface is the, it's trying to keep it a little more easier to navigate it. Like we're trying to migrate all of the movement you do inside the interfaces to just be done with your right, left and right triggers and the D-pad. So, when you work with stuff like that, you have to also think of like how to correctly design everything, like keep everything in a bit more of a horizontal way. For example, when we were selecting the whole mod stuff, we had this idea of, oh yeah, maybe we can go for something like this. They make, this is easier to read. However, this doesn't quite work for the whole selecting the left or right option instead of like up and down. As you can see, this one is clearly um, integrated in that way. Like, th there's no way you could, like, move around with your left and right triggers and make this feel in a more um, natural way. As everything in here is clearly saying you, like, you go up and you go down. So part of the work is trying to keep this, um, <clears throat> this kind of uh, displacement where you can clearly see, like, everything is separated in that way so it's easier to browse around it. While also trying to keep it, like, is it read, like, having a nice um, screen size and everything. Like, I have it like really zoomed out right now, so sometimes it might look like very tiny. However, we use a kind of like a rather large font. If I'm not mistaken, it's like a 30 pixels, 30? Yeah, 30 pixels wide. So it's, it's, it's rather big. Yeah, it's kind of rather big. As you can see, kind of like this is the original size and it's pretty easy to read. So, you like too much issues. And for now, like from the stuff we've been trying, everything seems like working. However, we've had a few chances to also try it around in different kinds of uh, screens because, like, when you're like playing around with your screen and you're like looking directly to a TV, well, I mean, to a screen monitor, like a PC monitor you see everything like very near you so it, you can kind of like get confused and think like everything is like clear and easy to read however then you have to think of when if somebody's going to play the game inside well in a normal uh, like a tv and in their consoles so they're just like sitting way far like the distance from the screen to the eyes it's a lot farther than the normal stuff you would do when you're playing inside your PC. Well, not inside. You, you can't get inside your PC. <laughs> that was the wrong proposition. My bad. But yeah, like when you're just playing like a normal screen, you would get like a little bit less than a meter around here. If we try, if I'm not mistaken with my conversion, I would be like, oof. Three feet? I think it would be... No, wait, no, that would be too much. No, yeah, I think it would be around, like, three feet around of, a, like, a distance from the screen to your eyes. Meanwhile, when you're, like, in the whole room, it's a lot more... The distance is a lot longer, so you have to take into account that the font shouldn't be, like, too tiny, or it will be very, very hard to read. Also, like, thinking, like, you're playing on the... I mean, I'm sure anyone, you guys must have had sometimes of a chance when you're playing something and then the screen just um like if you play in the switch you can be playing normally on your tv screen and then you move around to like the handheld mode and go back to the tv screen some games like make it 
it becomes pretty hard to read it when you're like in the docked mode because it's like it can be kind of a very tricky thing to balance but it's a fun stuff well it's a fun thing it's definitely interesting if not kind of hard to look at but yeah i mean compared to the whole um when you're like normally animating for more of a you know like the stream a few months ago where we were doing more stuff with the 3d model by itself it's usually a lot more um what's the word it's a lot faster to see like stuff happening compared to when you're like just uh doing more of like a graphic design stuff it's interesting but usually like the whole graphic side on video games tends to get a little bit like left on the sidewalk so to say but it's kind of a, a very important thing to work with like it's important to try and work uh like a personality and the design when you're even with your interfaces like the font you use the colors you use the sizes it can give very very different feelings depending on what you're doing so here we try to keep everything with just two fonts. So like we have the title font. This one is called um, Poppins. I think it said Poppins. And the other one we usually use is this one called Space for Task. Fun fact, they're both uh, from <laughs> Google Fonts. Like you want you, you actually have to suffer with just like normal um, like Arial and Times New Roman and maybe um, in Google. <laughs> What's the other one? Microsoft. Yeah, Comic Sans. Like, we can always have, like, the normal ones, but we also have a lot of uh, fun, nice, uh, free-to-use fonts in these kind of pages. It's usually, uh, my, it's cool fonts, and another one where you can always find, like, truly free fonts. Well, if you would like more, like, Creative Commons, that would be, um, the other one's called, like, Font Squirrel, where you can find, like, the correct stuff. Especially when one is when we when, when somebody's starting in this whole side of the creating their own game and all of that like the indie scene it's easy to find like oh yeah i think this font looks cool i'm going to use it because it's very nice but fonts aren't free <laughs> well most of them aren't actually free at all so it's very important to keep in mind to not be using something that's actually a lot more expensive and which you do not have the license to be able to use However, Google Fonts, as I was saying, it's a great option when you when you want a nice font. However, you don't have the fonts to play, like to pay for a whole font. Like some font families can go for over. I think there's a few that are like also like above a thousand dollars to use. Usually, and when you like for for video games and stuff, it would be like an embedded font, so it can go like over ten thousand dollars. So it's definitely something hard to do when uh, <laughs> when you're starting to make your own game. Not everybody can have the like the fonts to to pay for a completely new font or like a very like the classic ones. They can get pretty expensive. So it's better to just like make be sure that the fonts that are that you decide to use in your design are actually free to use and you wouldn't get like in any legal issues in there. So here, I was trying to see what would be a little bit more interesting to play around with in here. Now, if anybody knows about this program, maybe you hadn't heard of it, but it's a very nice one called uh, Pure Ref. It's, as you can see, it's a tiny little um, referencing screen where you can paste any kind of picture you need and you can have it to be like completely up in everything else. So I can have it over my <coughs> illustrator interface and it will not move around. It's pretty useful when you need like a quick reference of something. It's very nice. And they're a great team. 
Oh, whoops. <laughs> my bad. That was a little bit of misclicking on my side. But yeah, there's a lot of fun, interesting little programs that can make your work easier. And yeah, right now I'm just going to play around a little bit with the feeling of space where I'm going to see how my interface should be looking. It's a very, like, no, it's definitely not as interesting as when you're just looking at, um, you know, a character moving inside of, like, a 3D character with, in Maya or doing some stuff in, like, 2D animation with a harmony or animator. I think it's Adobe Animator now. So it's a lot more of, like, just trying to see if the feeling of the whole spot just looks nice. It's always a very good idea to try and make your own, your interfaces when you're just starting. It's a good idea to try and keep them with, um, I think pictorial. I uh, hope I'm saying that correctly. But yes, what we're trying to do right now, it's having this... In the past, you had to like choose a skill in here. Like you would see what which mods you have on your own skills. And then you would see like... You would select either of these ones. And then you would have like the option to upgrade or recycle the mod you had equipped. But it was like, a, as you can see, it has like a scroll bar. And you would have to move like all over the place. So right now we're trying... What we're doing, what we're working in, it's <clears throat> upgrade, updating it, so it works the same way as the new mod where you um where you install your mods, where it's more of like a tab system, and it's a lot more easier to browse around with. You just use your triggers instead of having to constantly click over with the D pad. So I'm just moving around all of these icons and my tabs to see what starts to feel a little bit more interesting in this size. Another thing you can see, we're really trying to make it a lot more easier to, um, to have more information around, make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Just this whole trying to make it a lot more easy to read. Because sometimes it can be like a little bit of trial and error, see if it would work better as keeping the um the option in as a big um box, if that would be the right word, like a, a, a large container where you can see the option directly, or maybe sometimes it's just easier to just like keep it as a simple um, selection in here. Like you already know, like if you want to install something, maybe you just need to use like the select button. And if you want to do the other one, you could maybe just use the cancel button instead of having all of this information. So then you can have a lot more space to work around with. And sometimes it's just a bunch of like, just clicking around and see which like funny square looks better than the other one. So 
So it's like this is a fun um, stream about squares, basically. I hope you guys are enjoying the square stream. Now let's see. I don't wonder, is the stream looking correct or does it look a little bit laggy to you guys? Because my computer seems to be going a little bit um, laggy in here. And I'm starting a little bit worried. Yeah. Something's funny going on a little bit in here. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go, my PC did not explode. I'm afraid it will explode at any second now. But it seems that will be not today. That's pretty good. Hmm. Are you guys enjoying the music? I'm quite a fan of the stuff the music team has been working on for the game. And <laughs> there's no better way to use like make sure it's DRM free when it's the game from the, the music from your own game. That's a very that's a very easy way to avoid um getting our stream muted. But yeah, definitely this seems like a good option to not have that. Let's try that out, see if it works. <clears throat> oh really the music you can you guys can't hear the music huh i see now that's kind of sad i've really had a lot of uh, technical issues today it seems like uh apparently obs just updated and so i guess windows updated too because a lot of stuff is just uh Working kind of funny, but <laughs> I guess new question is everybody. Um, can you guys hear the music now? That's good to know. However, just like so, maybe it's not like just a, too much of a slow um, stream. <laughs> maybe it's a little bit more interesting when we have some more music. Oh man, that's that's really sad, huh? I really don't know why my um my OBS uh, just died on me. That's very sad. Hopefully, I actually managed to get to get this fixed the next time around. Hopefully. Yeah, if you see anything of the stuff I'm doing that seems a little bit dumb. Like you're you find anything else that you find interesting in the stream, so please ask around guys. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Also remember if you like what you see, please uh uh the bot just help me with that one. <coughs> oh, it's really quiet. Let me see what I can do about that. But, uh, yeah, like, 
please if you like what you see if you see if this looks interesting to you guys please be sure to um follow us on twitch follow us on uh, twitter facebook if that's more your thing we post a lot more stuff about the game in there and if you would like to we would also love it if you could like add us to your wish list on steam so you can see a little bit more of the game Now, when we did this first part, we gave it a lot of like, punch to this whole feeling with the upgrading and the recycle. However, it seems like a lot of a wasted space in here. So let's just see how we can make it a little bit more cleaner in here. <laughs> it seems like I didn't select anything correctly. That is very sad indeed. Also, something very important to keep in mind if any of you guys of you guys that are watching the stream right now do work in design it's always very very important to constantly save your work all these things all these things programs know when somebody's like getting uh, nervous or when something might go wrong so they decide to exactly in that moment like just die on us so it's always a good thing idea to just constantly start saving on your files and also try to have like multiple versions of the same file. It's always good and there's not there's no such thing as saving too much your files. Now whenever you do work on uh when you start doing interfaces and all this kind of stuff it's good to like have your own like the stuff you're working on inside the normal program but it's also a very good thing to like constantly check how it starts to look like inside the game and be able to try it out as soon as possible so you can work on tweaking it as stuff that's needed instead of like just staying on the safe space that usually is um <laughs> illustrator or Photoshop or whichever program you guys prefer when you're designing. Like for example, in our case, sometimes the fonts look a little bit different when you're inside Unity and when you were in Illustrator. In our case, like in RFM's case in particular, for example, we do have this little interesting stuff. Let me show you a little bit more about it. For example, here in the settings, <clears throat> in the normal game, like, uh, well, at least in the main menu, we haven't been able to add uh, newer filters into the game. So the stuff looks like very clean and the way I see it, like if we, I open the settings in here, you can see it looks pretty much the same as the settings that you can see inside the Illustrator. Let me show you that screen again over here. Yeah, here it is. So it's pretty much the same. You can see it like the font's the same. It looks as clean as in here. There's a little bit of a difference in the rendering of the words, though. You can see it's a little bit more like sharper inside here. And when you go back to Unity, it seems it's a little bit more like a fuzzy thing going on in here. So it gives like a very different feeling in here. Right now, I'm just using my keyboard, so by default, it shows me the keyboard key bindings. But yeah, it looks like very simple. It looks like kind of like as is. Some stuff looks kind of funny, but it's fine for now. 
so however when we do go inside the game the game filter starts well working inside the screen and you can see just how like uh, the chromatic aberration starts working and like the noise filter inside the game is just like in there i'm not sure if it's like if you can see it that much over the stream because usually it like removes some of the uh what's the word like the bandwidth it makes it like a little bit more compressed and sometimes a little bit of this stuff it's kind of hard to see however maybe i, I think it's, it's like it's easier to notice inside the, the text box as you can see there's like a clear chromatic aberration going on in there you can see that little um pink shadow so everything looks a little bit well it looks rather different when you're inside the game see you can notice it over here too like the whole uh pink shadow going on inside the text and everything else it looks fancy and we like how i really like a lot how the feeling gives like a little bit more of like an old-timey look to the game however it's also very important to take into account that the font doesn't like makes it becomes like unreadable when you're inside the game So let me show you a little bit of that by using my amazing uh, development kit. So my, my development tricks, I'm sorry, not a kit. I'm not doing anything with a kit right now. This is just PC. But yeah, have a look at how different it starts to look when you're inside the game. Like some of the colors feel a little bit more like uh, brighter because of the whole... Um, chromatic aberration filter you can see it in here like it gives you this tiny little pink uh shadow well it's not a shadow it's a chromatic aberration but the way it looks in that particular spot it kind of looks like a shadow and if i go back to this one you can see how it looks quite different something small but it's a big big difference so let me show you this. Let me do this quickly. I think there's an easy way to trick this. Now, just give me a small second in here. Now, there we go. Just a little bit of browsing around. I do have a lot of files in here. Yeah, I think it's this one. Looks a little bit different in here, but it is this one. So yeah, for comparison, have a quick look at this. Yeah, as you can see, the whole, um, the containers look a lot more like wobbly inside the game because of the filter. I'm pretty sure you cannot see the texture that noise gives it because that I'm sure it's like, like that gets completely butchered by the streaming compression. However, you can see it a little bit like in the whole uh, Prana Dash stuff, like where you can see the skill name and the way the colors look when you have the filter inside. You can kind of see how it feels like. The yellow feels a lot more brighter inside the game. It's actually the same color. However, with the filter going on, that stuff kind of changes quite a little bit so it's very important to be like constantly checking out on the game and make sure that the stuff you designed it outside of the game works correctly inside too that sometimes it implies like changing around the font size changing around the um like the weight of the font and like maybe not use so many like light fonts because then it gets like completely butchered by the stuff inside
making sure that everything just works the way it should It is pretty cool, like, you can see that kind of stuff. stuff. It also happens, actually, with the characters themselves. Let me show you a little bit. I think they do talking here. Let's see. Like, it is slightly noticeable in here, however... Like, you can see how here, um, Morgan's, uh, portrait, the hair, like, clearly looks like it's been white. Like, his hair looks white. However, if we do look, like, at the normal, um... Screen. Well, let me show you the, like, the, the real portrait. Just give me a second right here. Oh no, I'm, I'm not mad at all. I just have like, uh, I guess I'm just concentrating. That gives me like the normal, uh, the furrow diver stuff. I, I, I furrow my eyebrows a lot, a lot. But no, 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 I wouldn't say I'm mad. No, not at all mad. It's pretty chill right now in here. Now, let me see if I can find the asset in here. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I also forgot to put on my glasses, so I'm kind of doing a lot more of like the normal squinting, trying to read the stuff I'm looking at. It's always important to not misplace your glasses if you use glasses. It's a nice cow, it gives a nice decoration to my little stream. I felt like the normal background was a little bit too sad. Make it a little bit funny, even if I look kind of mad, I'm not mad, maybe the cow helps, like... See? It's a nice stream. It's fun. <laughs> but here we go. So yeah, we, like, we might make a, a small comparison between the portrait, like... Inside the game and outside the game, you can see how a lot of stuff like changes a lot. And it's kind of interesting stuff. Like we work like the real portraits are done a lot more uh, darker. So when they're inside the game, they look like, well, like a little bit more brighter and interesting. Like you can see it mostly like in the hair difference. Like it looks a lot more grayer in uh, outside of the game. Oh, yeah, it's very pro streamer background. I love it. Me, like a lot of um, cow points. Yeah, <laughs> let's call them that. But yeah, it's a, like kind of like this mouse stuff. Like it looks a lot more uh, blue outside of the game, but then you can see it looks a lot more of like a violet shirt inside. Kind of like tiny little tweaks and fun stuff we do all, over, all around the place. But once it doesn't work, it just feels a lot nicer. But yeah, like the whole stuff, like this one is like a very light font. If you go back to the one inside the game in Illustrator, we can see how like this font is normally like, it looks I would say it looks pretty readable. It looks normal. It looks fine. Easy to read. Easy to see. But once... Not that. Once we go into the game, it starts looking a little bit... Um, a little bit too light, perhaps. So, as I was saying, we're still tweaking around some of the... Stuff in here. We well, An important part of here, we definitely need to work a little bit more in the font sizes. Because some of those I do feel a little bit too small and hard to read. <laughs> but yeah 
just to show you a little bit of guys of a difference between it like here's inside the game and here's back in the design screen you can see how it looks rather different like the whole having the noise filter going on just this whole like feeling of a kind of like a lo-fi blurriness gives it a very nice touch however it's important to make sure that it doesn't go like way too lo-fi and then it becomes hard to read it's a fun thing it's a fun thing but it might not be fun for everybody but it's definitely kind of a fun thing to do and like if anybody in the stream happens to do like uh well probably yeah but in the whole of uh, design stuff it's always nice to like offer this kind of uh, services to studios because like not everybody has someone who works directly on graphic design stuff so it's it's, it's interesting but yeah that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, the whole uh, design of the, at, the, at least this game. The whole trying to make sure that things are readable, make it interesting, try to keep it on the... Um, how you call it? Like a more of a complete, uh, concise look where nothing looks like too out of place. We definitely have a lot of stuff looking out of place at the moment because we're definitely, we haven't been done... Uh, changing the new interfaces it's still like kind of a work in progress and it's kind of a slow work in progress you did, uh, i mean if you guys did follow me on the previous stream where we were doing uh, animation we didn't get a lot of stuff done but it definitely looked like a lot more stuff done compared to what we have right now it's it is quite a slow process but it's nice so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this tiny art stream if it was to your liking, we will probably see more of it uh, on... What's the word again? Sorry? On further along dates, maybe in a few months, we can do a lot more of this stuff. Or maybe we can do more of the whole uh, animation stuff. Let's see if... <clears throat> I'd love to hear more of what you guys find more interesting to see I mean, from the whole development standpoint. But yeah, I hope you guys like this stream and we'll see each other in a few weeks. Have a nice day, everybody, and I hope, well, yes, as I said before, if you guys like the game, please follow us on Steam, join us on Twitter, on TikTok, if that's more of your kind of uh, social media, There's we still will work with Facebook, and you can also join us at our Discord, where we share more of the fun stuff and the whole thing that kind of like just, uh, that, you know, the glitches, the bugs, all of the funny stuff. <clears throat> So yeah, see you everybody, have a nice weekend, and enjoy the cow. <laughs>